In this video, I'm going to explain the polygraph test Dr. Ford, Christine Blasey, was submitted to during the Brett Kavanaugh hearing or Brett Kavanaugh nomination for the Supreme Court of the United States. Was it manipulated? Was it fake? Was it wrong? Was it a hoax? I will try to answer the critics and also explain the polygraph process so that you can make sense of what happened. In the description of this video, I will put links to the videos and documents so that you can cross-check my sources. Okay? So, let's start. But first of all, let me start by saying that I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I'm not even a US citizen. I'm just trying to explain the polygraph process. Now, let me start by introducing the case. Let's start at the beginning. Judge Brad Kavanaugh was nominated by President Trump to be uh, one of the next nine justices of the U.S. Supreme Court after the resignation of Justice Anthony Kennedy. As you can imagine, this is an important appointment in the United States. The nominee must undergo certain scrutiny by the Senate Judiciary Committee, which at that time was held by 11 Republicans and 10 Democrats. So far, so good. The hearings were public and could be followed by the whole country. Nevertheless, at the end of September, Judge Brad Kavanaugh come, came under fire because of allegations made by Christine Blasey Ford. Dr. Ford allegedly uh, said that she had she was or has been abused in the past by Judge Kavanaugh. After um, looking or searching counsel from her lawyers, these lawyers asked Dr. Ford to undergo a polygraph test to support her allegations or to confirm her allegations. Actually, Dr. Ford was called to testify in front of the Senate Judiciary Com Committee. And one of the documents or one of the evidence she showed or she, she brought up during that, that interview, during that, that uh, investigation, is a polygraph test or the report of a polygraph test. That polygraph exam has been under severe scrutiny by the public, not only by the Senate Judiciary Committee, by the whole public, and came under a lot of critics. A lot of people call, called it a scam, made up, a hoax. Now, the main critics were, why did the polygraph exam only ask two questions? Or, Dr. Ford is a trained psychologist, she knows how to beat the polygraph. I will address those questions in this video, but first of all, let's take a look at the polygraph examiner, the professional that actually did that polygraph test. Jeremiah Hannafin is an experienced polygraph examiner. As you can see in his resume posted on his website, I will leave a link in the description. Mr. Hannafin started uh, doing polygraphs while still working at the FBI in 1995. And since 2010, he has his own practice. Mr. Hannafin had his polygraph training at the DOPI, which is the Department of Defense Polygraph Institute, now known as NCCA, National Center for, the C for Credibility Assessment. Mr. Hannafin is also a member of the AAPP, which is the American Association of Police Polygraphists, and also a member of the Virginia Polygraph Association. Now, to perform polygraphs in Virginia, you need a license. So, if he is a member of the Virginia Polygraph Association, I mean, they have done their, their due diligence, and let's say that Mr. Hannafin is a qualified polygraph examiner. Overall, great resume. Mr. Hannafin is known by mm, Dr. Ford's lawyers, so they contacted him to perform a polygraph test on Dr. Ford. So now let's see if the polygraph examiner did a good job. Okay, in the description of this video, I'll put a link to an interview the polygraph examiner actually gave to Fox News, so that you can also get his take and the questions he answered about this polygraph test. Okay, but I will go further, deepen into the polygraph test. So stay tuned. So question number one, why? did Dr. Ford do a polygraph test? Or why did the lawyers of Dr. Ford ask her to do a polygraph test? 
Mm, very easy. Due diligence. Dr. Ford approached the lawyers with some very heavy, tough accusations against the nominee to the highest court, the Supreme Court of the U.S. I mean, the lawyers couldn't take the jump into the abyss and just believe Dr. Ford by what she was saying. So they asked her, would you submit to a polygraph test to test your statement? Would you do a polygraph exam to see if you're being honest about what you're saying? If you're being truthful about those allegations made against Brett Kavanaugh? So the first thing to do is do a confidential polygraph exam to see if Dr. Ford would actually pass that test. And I guess, based on the outcome of that polygraph test, their lawyers decided to maybe even investigate a little bit more, gather more information. Question. Why did the polygraph only have two questions? Well, the polygraph did not only have two questions, but it had two relevant questions. But let me try to explain why it only had two relevant questions. But first of all, of course the polygraph examiner asked many more questions during the pretest interview. He had to, so that he knew what information to base his polygraph test on. There are many more questions that were made by the polygraph examiner. However, on the report, two relevant questions are stated. I will leave a link to the polygraph examiner, Mr. Hannafin, uh, uh, polygraph report so that you can also see the full report and understand how the polygraph test went. It's very self-explanatory, at least for polygraph examiners. So let's try to explain each, each step of the polygraph process. Well, first of all, the polygraph examiner has to study the case and understand the case so that he can adapt the case to an actually a polygraph test, which has certain procedures and standards. So the polygraph examiner asked Dr. Ford to put her statement in writing so that he also could understand what she was trying to prove. After having Dr. Ford putting a statement in writing, the polygraph examiner went over that statement with Dr. Ford, fine-tuning the information so that he could use it for a polygraph test. So, he asked her for concrete actions that later were written into uh, in, onto the report. For example, push me into the bedroom, put his hand on my mouth, got on top of me, was having a hard time undressing me. All of those actions that could be interpreted as sexual assault, which was the accusation made by Dr. Ford. Great work so far by the polygraph examiner. The polygraph examiner then had to choose a validated polygraph technique for this specific case. The polygraph examiner chose a technique known as federal U-phase zone comparison test, which is an appropriate test for this kind of this specific test. Now the thing is that this technique only allows two relevant questions. The two questions that he finally wrote onto the report. And they are, is any part of your statement false? And did you make up any part of your statement? Basically the same question, just asked in a different way. Now, in a polygraph test, it's important to understand that the questions are not a matter of quantity, but rather of quality. And the two questions used by the polygraph examiner nailed it. Was Dr. Ford being truthful or deceitful about the actions she stated Brett Kavanaugh doing to her? This was the objective of the, of the test, the goal of the test, making sure that she was honest about the actions she stated that happened with Brad Kavanaugh. And by the way, this technique, the federal U-phase zone comparison technique that the polygraph examiner used, actually has nine questions. Two of them relevant, but there are nine questions in this technique. So not only two questions were used, but nine 
questions in this technique. And these questions were repeated in at least three occasions, as you can see in the polygraph report. Total of four charts, including a stim test. I'll explain later what a stim test is. So let's take a look at the quality of the relevant questions. I personally think that the polygraph examiner chose the right questions, did the right thing as there were too many actions to include in one polygraph test. So he chose to focus the polygraph test on the statement made by Dr. Ford. However, this is difficult or increases the difficulty of a polygraph test because there are a lot of actions that are in the statement. So the examinee needs to be 100% sure, sure that she is truthful about what you wrote in that statement. Any little doubt would cause Dr. Ford to fail the test. And she passed the test. So she showed to be convinced and truthful about her statement in the polygraph test. And the fact that she passed the test also tells us that all the other questions formulated in that, in the, in that technique were very well redacted and formulated. Now the following question. How should I interpret the polygraph test results? So let's take a look at the final results. The polygraph report says that to question A, is any part of your statement false? Dr. Ford got a plus four. And to question B, did you make up any part of your statement? Dr. Ford got a plus five, making a total of plus nine. In polygraph terms, she passed a test with flying colors. So, but let's see. I'm going to get a little bit technical now, but let's see. The polygraph examiner says that he used a three point scale. So, he was going to give a plus one, zero, or minus one to each channel, each reading that he, uh, that he would test the relevant question. So, if Dr. Ford physiological activity showed deception, he would give a minus one. If it would show truthfulness, he would give a plus one. Or if you couldn't make up truthfulness, deceitfulness, he would give a zero. Or neutral, a zero. Now, there are three channels to be scored on each question. One, the respiratory channel, the sweat channel, the skin conductance, or sweat, and the cardiovascular channel, blood pressure, blood rate, blood volume. So in each channel, is scored with plus one, zero, or minus one. So, from the report, we can see that the polygraph, polygraph examiner ran three charts. So, each question A and B was tested at least on three occasions. So, question A, three charts, three channels, possible of nine scores. Question B, same thing, three charts, three channels, also nine possible scores. So, the maximum scores possible for question A would be a plus nine. Or for question B, a plus 9, making a total of plus 18. That would be the maximum perfect score. And minimum possible scores? Well, question A, minus 9. Question B, minus 9. So, making minus 18 the worst possible score in this test. So, and Dr. Ford had a score of question A, plus 4. And question B, plus 5. Meaning... She passed the test. Passed it as an additional load. The polygraph examiner also did a stim test, which is normally a test that you do so that you can see that everything is working fine, that the polygraph is reading the physiological data of the examinee. So he did that to make sure that before he ran the actual test, you know, the relevant issue physiological data regis re registration that everything was for working fine so that's a normal that's a good thing that he did that and they w this increased the 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 readings or improved the readings when he actually did the real test and actually the polygraph report is very mm, much self-explanatory at least for polygraph examiners and we can see that there is an intent at least from part of the polygraph examiner that did this test to be transparent. 
And then there is a question, what about Dr. Four being trained to pass that polygraph test or colluded with the polygraph examiner? Now this myth about beating polygraph tests lasts longer than the Roman Empire. You know, actually, it's not that easy to beat the polygraph test. I prepared a little video that you can watch here, you know, that explains why it's not that easy to beat the polygraph test. Also, the polygraph examiner that did this test is a very highly experienced polygraph examiner. And any attempt by Dr. Ford to beat the polygraph would be detected by such um, an experienced polygraph examiner. And there was just too much at stake for a normal human being to think that he could beat the polygraph test mm, on, on such allegations. I mean, those were very tough allegations made by Dr. Ford. I mean, she knew that she probably might be called in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee to talk about this. A lot of pressure was put on Dr. Ford. And also, as far as I could understand, this was the first polygraph test that Dr. Ford actually did. Maybe I'm wrong, but as, as far as I know, it's the first test that she did. And Dr. Ford doesn't seem to have a history of cheating, robbing, stealing her way through life. She's a recognized professional in the field. So really, I don't think the polygraph examiner would put his or would sacrifice his reputation to help Dr. Ford. And then again, I'm sure the polygraph examiner handed over all the information about this polygraph test to the counterpart, to the Senate Judiciary Committee, so that they could check and they could cross-examine the polygraph test. So I don't think there was a collusion, and I don't think, I'm pretty sure, Dr. Ford couldn't beat the polygraphic polygraph test, even if she wanted to. Just a final note. Now, I know that this is a highly political mm, case, and I am expecting every word I said in this video to be twisted and spun, so that each side can, you know, support the narrative. However, this is not the intention of this video. This video was meant to explain the polygraph process and to mm, respond to a lot of critics and criticisms that arose after the information about the polygraph test was known. So the intent of this video is to give answers, not to defend any thesis. I just tried in this video to put the very specific polygraph test under scrutiny, answer the main critics, and try to make the polygraph process clearer to the layman. Hope you enjoyed it. Just a little message before you go and watch some other video. If you want to be updated about the most recent videos we upload, the questions we answer, or the opinions we might have about our industry, subscribe and you will be the first one to be informed about our latest videos, our most recent opinion. Subscribe. Have you? Okay. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Should I take out the polygraph? Oh, okay. Okay. Subscribe.